There is no such thing at this state of the world's history in America as an independent press. You know it and I know it. There is not one of you who dares to write your honest opinions and if you did, you know beforehand that it would never appear in print. We are the tools and vassals of rich men behind the scenes. We are the jumping jacks. They pull the strings and we dance. These words are commonly attributed to the New York Times former managing editor John Swinton in the 19th century. A scathing self-reflection of journalism for someone who held such an important position. Is the situation any different today in the Western mainstream media? They assure people they can be trusted. But is that the truth, especially when it comes to reporting on China? Having followed countless stories on this topic, I have discerned at least seven widespread ills that plague today's international media. I can borrow from the religious terminology the seven deadly sins, namely pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath and sloth. What do I mean? Let me explain one at a time and I'll do that in reverse order to peel from the more superficial vices to the core of the problem. And let's start with deadly sin number seven, sloth. When it comes to China, it's somehow the norm for professional scrutiny to lose its vigor. A US news channel recently aired a photo as evidence that the Chinese delegation did not stand up and applaud after Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky spoke during a World Economic Forum meeting held in Davos, Switzerland. The claim and the photo were provided by a US congressman who has been interviewed at Davos to single out China for not sharing the West's stance on the issue. He even claimed, without being challenged, that the Chinese had blood on their hands. However, it turned out the photo had no Chinese people in it. Instead, it showed Vietnamese delegates, including a deputy prime minister. Clearly, it was a blunder and the TV channel just accepted the congressman's words about the photo, no questions asked. I think when it comes to China reporting, there just isn't follow-up. There isn't real investigation. A lot of it is just based on misconceptions and preconceived notions of China and its society, its economy. It isn't based on real work. In a statement upon the request of a Chinese media, the channel said they regret the error and have reached out to the congressman's office for a statement. How about doing that before the damage was done? By the way, I have yet to see any public apologies or corrections made on the matter by the channel or the politician. This was not the first time such a blunder was committed when 39 victims died during a human trafficking case in Essex, UK in October 2019, some UK media speculated they were escaping the Chinese regime even before the victims' identities were confirmed. That everyone inside this trailer was a Chinese national. But just let's say they're Chinese nationals. Just let's say they come from a, a regime, perhaps. Instead of exercising caution, the media jumped on the police's initial statement that these people were believed to be Chinese nationals. The media announced to the world that the victims were Chinese. Days later, it turned out they were all from another Asian country. They're stuck in stereotypes. They're still thinking that, you know, Chinese people are so poor that they're immigrating anywhere. That was true a long time ago. It's no longer true. 